Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. While it might be holiday time for some, this is the time of the year that I get to tinker with a lot of the things that I've wanted to over the earlier stages of the year. You may remember this Thunderbolt 4 QNAP NASA we did a review on a couple of weeks ago. While I was poking around inside, I noticed something very interesting. The whole operating system for the QNAP is not EMMC, so it's not soldered to the motherboard. Instead, it's installed on a USB DOM. What does that mean? Well, you're going to find out after this word from today's video sponsor. This video is brought to you by Gigabyte and their brand new G6 gaming laptop. It features a super fast 16x10 Full HD plus 165Hz refresh rate display for buttery smooth gaming whether you're at your desk or you're on the go. To drive that fast display, the G6 also packs a discrete NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 GPU that offers solid performance for an amazing 1080p gaming experience. The Gigabyte G6 now features an even larger 15 by 9 centimeter precision touchpad, which enhances flexibility and accuracy. The new G6 keyboard also allows you to choose from 15 preset backlight colors. To find out more about the Gigabyte G6 gaming laptop, check out the links in the description. Let's give you a bit of education on what a DOM is. A DOM is a disk on module. Essentially what it is, is a bit of flash memory that has a different interconnect based on the use case. You can get SATA DOMs or SATA DOMs which plug into your motherboard and work exactly the same way. This one here will plug into a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard. And that got me thinking, is the operating system actually installed on this USB DOM? The first thing I had to do was figure out if the USB DOM was removable. Now, I already removed this and there was a bit of a blob of glue on the back of it holding it to the motherboard, but I just wiggled it a little bit and that USB DOM pops right out. Essentially, all this is, is eight gigs of storage, which is more than enough for the operating system with a USB 2.0 header connector for your motherboard on it, which means technically, if I wanted to plug this in to a motherboard and another computer and run QNAP's operating system, I had to pull this out and see if the system didn't boot. And surprise, surprise, it didn't boot, which means we're in business. It means we can start tinkering. The next natural thing for me was, this is a NAS. You can plug lots of drives into this. QNAP's operating system is fine, but it ain't no true NAS. So can we install true NAS on this NAS without damaging or ruining the operating system that comes on this from the factory, just in case we wanted to revert it back. To be honest, I've already done it. And the answer is, you'll notice that on the motherboard of this QNAP NAS, there is a USB 2.0 front panel connector, but the Keynote out there would have already noticed that there is no secondary ground pin, which introduces the first issue with just plugging any USB device into this. You can buy USB DOMs, However, they're not very accessible to get. You'll have to buy them on something like AliExpress and they could take up to a month to ship and I don't have a month to wait. Typically, you'd use a cable like this to pull something off which plugs into your motherboard header and then you can plug any USB device you like into it on the other end. But that's not the case with the wiring on this. And this is something I had to discover on my own. Typically on these blocks, they're wired to operate as a single USB port, which is why there's only a single USB port on this end, right? I hope that makes sense to you. On this motherboard, it expects it to be plugged into the other port, not the default pinout for this. So I had to move the wiring from this, this side here to the other side Typically, you just plug something like this into a motherboard header and expect it to work. But yeah, that's the first thing I came across was I had to rewire this block and repin it for it to get any power to a USB stick or an external USB SSD. This can only be plugged in one way into the motherboard. Otherwise, if you plug it in the wrong way and then plug in a USB device, you can damage your motherboard. So the correct way to do this is the red wire, which is for power, needs to be on the bottom left-hand side of the connector. 
And there is a blocked out pin that will not fit in if you do it the wrong way anyway. So most of the time, this should go in with little to no issue. And now we have a USB port that should technically allow us to do anything with the QNAP NAS. Here's where it gets interesting. Let's install TrueNAS and I'll show you just how easy it is to get this up and running. Now that we're not held back by the operating system that comes on your QNAP and we won't damage this at all because it's not inside the NAS at all. You wanna plug in a USB keyboard. I've got a wireless USB keyboard for this and HDMI and some networking. I'm using a Connect X3 Mellanox card just to make it a little bit easier here and for 10 gigabit ethernet because this NAS in particular doesn't have 10 gigabit built in. You'll then need two USB sticks, one for the operating system to be installed on and one to use to install the operating system. You will require two. I've just got to mention though, it's not recommended to install TrueNAS on a USB stick because the flash memory in USB sticks is typically pretty trash. And if you can use a USB SSD and mount it inside the case, but just to show you how this works, this is how we're gonna do it in this video. Again, remember, do not install TrueNAS to a USB stick in a production environment because it will kill the flash memory eventually. If you do have a USB SSD, I would recommend using that instead of a USB stick. But again, for the purposes of showing you how this works, we're just gonna use a USB stick because TrueNAS doesn't take up a whole lot of storage. First things first, plug in your USB stick. This is where the operating system is going to be installed. And again, try and plug this one into the one that's inside your NAS. Because this one's rubbery, we can just tuck it away in here next to where the M.2 slots are. But something I'd actually recommend is if you're using a USB SSD, you plug your SSD into that USB port and you can actually run the cable over the top here. There's a little indentation here where it should fit to close the case. And then you can put your USB SSD in the case somewhere else. Just make sure it doesn't touch anything that can short it out but in this configuration, it should be fine. Now we're gonna plug our TrueNAS installation media into the front USB port, and we're gonna power it up. All right, you wanna start spamming delete or F2. It's one of those two keys, so we can jump into the BIOS. And you'll notice that the BIOS here is not very sophisticated. It's the same as a normal BIOS on any PC. That's because this is just a regular PC at the end of the day. What we're gonna do is change the boot order. This disk here that we've already got selected is the USB for installation for TrueNAS and we're just gonna hit save, save changes and exit. And then if we're lucky, we'll be greeted with the TrueNAS scale installation menu. Hit enter and let Grub do its thing. Hit install and upgrade or slash upgrade. And it's gonna show us a list of disks that we've got here. So first of all, you're seeing the two M.2 drives that we've got installed in here already. These are the cache drives that we used when we did our review. These are the six spinning Rust drives that we had installed in here already, but we're going to install it to this USB stick. In fact, it's already installed here, but I wanna show you how we do it again from scratch. And we'll just go fresh install here, but usually it won't give you this prompt. We'll just hit fresh install. We'll format the boot device and let it do its thing. You'll set up your admin user. And with a bit of luck, TrueNAS should start its installation. Because you're installing to a USB stick, it is gonna be a little bit slower than usual because it's running at USB 2.0 speed. So, you know, it is what it is, but it should only take two or three minutes to finish the installation. Pull out the USB stick, hit OK, and hit Reboot. You're greeted with the Grub Boot menu, and TrueNAS is installed now. We'll let it boot up. Resolution's a bit wonky, but that's fine. That's no big deal. Might make it better for filming. Our network link for our Mellanox cards come up. So our ethernet, well rather our 10 gig ethernet is working. Hopefully this isn't hard to read, but we've got the IP address assigned for our new true NAS installation. Let's log in and show you what the deal is. All right, here's the login screen for true NAS scale. We're just gonna log in here and we'll be greeted with the admin panel for TrueNAS Scale. This is what it looks like if you've never seen it before. First of all, we'll just run over a couple things. Our network is 10 gig. It's not actually fiber. We're just using a transceiver to do it, but it thinks it's fiber. You will have this warning if you install it on a USB drive that will say 
it's not recommended. I agree, it's really not recommended. You can see our CPU here is the Intel Core i5-12400, which we covered in the review. We've got 32 gigs of RAM, and we'll start up by setting up the storage, but this here actually has the storage from our old QNAP installation. So if we hit storage and create pull, it will tell you there was a ZFS pull already existing from QNAP's operating system which means potentially you could import this whole pool if you had QNAP's operating system already running. We'll just call this test. I don't really care what's on here because we had nothing on here. We'll just go raid, I'm gonna say raid Z2, which is probably the closest to what we had before. Uh, disk size was that was the size we had with, uh, we'll go six wide single VDEV. Actually, let's add the SSD cache, both of them. We'll do two wide for SSD cache. And then, yeah, we'll just hit that, hit review and create pool. All right, and you can see now our new test pool is set up. We've got RAID Z2, six drives wide, total capacity of 14.4 TB bytes and two of those M.2 SSDs as the cache. And that's basically it. This is a very simple TrueNAS setup. You can then create shares and everything here, but that's basically it. You'd probably want to go ahead and create some data sets as well. We'll just do um, just a quick data set. And we can create a network share from that data set. And usually we go no presets when we set this up and hit save. You can configure access control lists here. We'll just leave this because we're gonna nuke this installation anyway, but this is just to show you that TrueNAS scale can be installed on a QNAP. There you go, a QNAP NAS running TrueNAS natively on the middle without too many weird shenanigans going on in the background. Also completely preserving your default installation of QUTS. I thought this one would be pretty interesting to show you guys as it's just one of those things that I would do when I was tinkering just to figure out if something worked and not necessarily make a video about it. But you know, it's holiday time, it's tinker time, it's that time of the year where I just feel like messing around with stuff. And I thought I would take you along for this weird and interesting little journey. If you're interested, you can apply this same method to installing TrueNAS on the Acer Store NAS that we covered a little while ago. That though is slightly different as you need to disable the internal EMMC so you don't override it. But for this, we're good to go. We just pull this out. And if we wanna restore the NAS back to default, we just plug this back in. There's also something that I wanna start tinkering with as well. One thing you'll notice is if you're running TrueNAS on a QNAP NAS with the screen on the front, you can't do anything with the screen. So I'm gonna look and see if there's a way that I can get the screen working with TrueNAS or if there's already a way to do it, let me know in the comments down below because it's something that I think is worth exploring because if I'm being honest, I have a whole bunch of 16 terabyte drives that I use for backup for other projects and stuff that I think I'm just gonna dump into this and use in this NAS. Let us know if you like this kind of content and all that jazz. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seeking. Here's the review for this QNAP NAS if you wanna see it, right? Oh, my face is so itchy right now. I've been waiting so long to scratch my face. Oh, so, so itchy. Yeah. Okay, that'll just about do it. Thanks for watching.